If you, like me, spend a lot of time playing games, then you've probably had this thought cross your mind before. What if your life was a video game? Just like in a game, you could level up your skills and see your progress bars. You could customize the way that you look at the push of a button. And you could easily see how well your conversation of choice was impressing your crush. I mean, think about it. If your life was a game, it would be one big adventure. You would get awesome missions to accomplish like slaying dragons or obtaining new magical powers. Or more realistically, you'd be bombarded by side quests that kind of just get in the way. Awkward. But the more I think about this, the more I realize that growing up in this digitally driven generation, life kind of is a game, or at least it's becoming more gamified. Now, hear me out. Of course, it's not a game in the sense that we're going out and slaying dragons and getting magic powers. I freaking wish. But just like in a game, we seem to have certain stats that we can perceivably level up through not our actual selves, but our digital selves. When you have an Xbox, a PlayStation, or even if you play on games like Skyrim, WoW, blah, 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 you make an avatar, right? You make them look how you want them to look. You make them have certain skills and attributes that you feel kind of relate to you, probably, or are completely the opposite to you if you want to make something completely different. And in real life, we sort of do that too. We have our real selves, the selves that aren't always that great and have breakdowns and we pick our noses. I know you do, don't tell me that you don't. But then we have our digital selves that we share online for the whole entire world to see. And that self is the one that is more gamified. Just like in a game, we're able to give ourselves stats on our digital selves throughout these digital platforms, throughout these websites, throughout these social media accounts, and there are so many. In a way, gamification can be amazing. Gamifying your life means that you get goals to reach, you can see how far you're progressing, it makes you very motivated. And a lot of education systems have actually grasped onto this. Places like Code Academy and things like that, where they gamify learning, I think is awesome. It's an awesome way to learn. You can see that you're getting awards, you're learning, you're progressing in your skill sets, and it makes you feel so, so good. But in so many other ways, this gamification of our digital selves can be kind of scary if we don't pay attention to it and realize what it could be doing to our real selves that are hiding behind the digital self that is online. This, by the way, is my digital self. Hi, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. We're in that age now where checking the internet, checking our phones, having it buzz constantly with notifications is, is the norm. It's constantly kind of a recognition of who you are, who you're putting out there online, and what other people are thinking of you. But if you think about it logically and you think about it in a gaming sense, it's basically just numbers. If you upload a new photo to Instagram, you're going to get a certain amount of hearts. If you upload a new profile picture to Facebook, you might get some loves or some likes or some ha-has. Hopefully not the ha-has. Why are people laughing at your profile picture unless it's supposed to be funny? And also people are using these platforms in amazing ways. They're documenting how they are progressing as people. They're documenting their journeys through life. If they're a musician, they're putting their music online. If they bake, or do art. They're posting their arts and their treats, everything that they're doing online so people can see how they progress. And this is amazing because as the person who's putting their outputs onto these platforms, you're seeing how it's being perceived by a wider audience. And with these numbers of people liking, commenting, sharing, hopefully you're seeing a progression of these numbers. You're seeing it slowly go upwards. As your skills progress, the numbers progress as well. And in a way, that's telling you that you're winning. You're leveling up. You are reaching higher levels and it's making you more determined to do what you're doing. Just like in a game, when you're leveling up fast or you've had a really tough time getting past a certain level and then you make it 
It makes you want to play the game more. It makes you more motivated, it makes you more excited, it makes you happy. But there are so many ways where this can suddenly crumble. This can become your downfall. The gamification of social media can be a terrifying, terrifying concept. Because unlike a game, when things go wrong, when people don't like what you do, when you feel like you're not good enough because the numbers aren't matching up or they're dropping and you're leveling down instead of up, you can't just simply rage quit. You cannot just chuck your controller and say, nah, I'm done. Because the digital you is still you. You're giving what you perceive as the best parts of yourself and you're putting them online. This isn't a fictional character that you've just made up with green bumpy skin who looks like a troll because that was funny at the time. Nah, no, I liked her green zombie skin. What do you call that? Trollzilla. Now that's really boring. But anyway, the point is people online can see you as, I guess, an avatar because they don't know the real you. They're just seeing this one version of you that you're putting out there under filters and under precise text and everything else. And they don't get to see the real you or the real impact that they might have on what they say to you or if they don't like your photo. This is, this is weird. Am I making sense here? I am so sure that life is just becoming more and more gamified and this can be really good, but it can be very, very, very detrimental to your mental health if you don't switch off. Just like you switch off a game, you don't want to be plugged into the game forever. Maybe you do, but you shouldn't do because real life is there too and you need to step outside. But at the same time, we need to step away from the gamification of life that is brought to us through the internet and social media because it can get so crazy. There is no off button. When you spend forever choosing a new Facebook profile picture, when you spend so long learning a new song or drawing a new pace of, why can't I say pace? A new piece of art. You feel like these numbers and these stats are decreasing and you're leveling down and you're not getting any better. This is not a game. You can't just switch off. You can't just blame the controller. You're basically grading your self-worth. You're, you're basing these numbers that are shown to you online throughout all these social media platforms and the way that the internet is. You're telling yourself, this is how good I am. This is how nice I look. This is how talented I am. This is how intelligent I am. Because in a game, it's so simple. They're just stats, it's just bars. Your friends are level 10, you're at level eight. You know you can just spend a whole day playing the game and you will win them in the next battle that you play against them. But in life, if you take this to heart and your digital self becomes a reflection on the real you and who you are and you take everything very literally and very personally, this can really play with your mental health. I think it's something to be aware of when it becomes more personal and it's about the way that you look or the way that you act or the skills that you have or what you're proud of, who you are as a person, your self-worth. You need to differentiate from the internet you and the real you because those figures don't matter. They should not define who you are in the real world because the real you is worth so much more than a bunch of love hearts, likes or numbers. I'm not too sure how to end this. I was just thinking about life being a game and how amazing that would be. And then I kind of realized that every now and then I do get quite down because life is a game. And I know that if I've spent a long time on something and I'm really proud of it, soon as I realize that other people might not think so or it's not being perceived in the way that I thought it would, I will instantly put myself down. Even if before I put it up there as my digital self, I was happy with it. And that's something that perhaps I have a mindset of because I play games and because I'm so used to the leveling up system or maybe it's something that you can relate to and if you can then I want you to become aware of it because I wasn't aware of it for a very long time and I think now that I am aware of it I know how to deal with it a lot better. I know that I need to shut off on the internet sometimes, I need to shut down my game of life and enjoy real life. Go out to see nature, do things with my friends, do things for me, on my own, without sharing it online, without trying to give myself another level up by getting some extra lights on a new Instagram post or something like that. Don't get me wrong, 
You guys know that I love the internet, I love social media, I am on there all the time, but once it starts to become personal, I just think you need to shut down the game. That's from Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, isn't it? It's my digital me. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I just want to say a massive thank you to 1MT for sponsoring this video. It's people like them that really, really help me to keep doing what I'm doing and making content for you guys. I love working with people because they give me creative briefs and then I get to be as creative as I like with them. And not to mention their game, Revenge of Sultans, is actually pretty addictive. I have been playing it for quite a while now, every single day. It's a massive multiplayer online game. Join people around the world in this epic RTS MMO to reclaim the kingdom of Arabian Peninsula. Yeah. Basically, you are a lord and you have your own kingdom and you have to manage that by upgrading your troops and building farms and even battling. And you get a horse as well once you get to level four, I think it was. I was pretty excited when I saw the horse because I didn't realize you could get that. So you can upgrade your horse as well. And of course, you, you got your walls and your castle and you've got little other parts that you can unlock along the way. And you, you're constantly getting money as well. Like usually in these things you have to pay to kind of carry on playing. And you can do that in this game, I'm not gonna lie to you. But you just keep on getting little packages of things like every single day, so I haven't had to pay anything, which is great. And then even better, you get to go off from your kingdom and explore what is around you. So you get to go to other kingdoms, you get to charge and try to take over them. I have been taken over a couple of times and I'm really bad. I keep on failing. I am failing at this game, but it's okay because I'm not failing at the game of life. But yeah, you get to send your troops out and then you can battle creatures like genies or goats. That will give you experience points so you will have a better chance to actually take over someone else's kingdom. They've got a pretty cool community around it as well, so you can make your own alliances once you get to level six, and then you can have all your friends kind of in a comment board, and you can play together, which is really nice because it's always good to have that kind of competitive element, but also the element where you can just play and share your progress and everything cool that you've been doing with your friends. Anyway, the link for that game will be in the description below, so do check that out if you want to play a new game on your mobile. It's for both iPhone and Android, so everyone can play, and it's free to play, so that's even better. So thank you again, 1MT, for this brilliant opportunity to work with you, and for introducing me to your pretty fun game. Anyway, if this video sparked some sort of realisation in your head that actually, hey, my life could be a video game as well because of social media, or if you think that I'm just talking absolute bollocks, then and do write in the comments below. I'd love to start a conversation about this and see what your thoughts are on the topic. I'm probably gonna get some comments like, oh, you're, you're overthinking, because I, I get that a lot. So I'm probably just overthinking, but hey-ho. It's pretty cool to think of life as a game though, right? It keeps you competitive. It keeps you wanting to level up. Just don't let it get too far. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. Just don't let it get too far. Life is still life. Life is no game but it can be fun. Okay, time to shut down now. <laughs> Digital me plugged out. Have a lovely day or evening. Bye. <sighs> okay, I just rambled like so much there. I, I'm so sorry, yes. Like this is gonna be the hardest thing to edit.